Now, Hyundai is a brand that has constantly continued to impress me with each new vehicle that I drive. Today, let's take a look at the smallest offering that the company offers. This is a 2014 Hyundai Accent. Now, the Accent competes directly in the subcompact class. This is a class of vehicle that is smaller than your average compact car. Uh, this is known as the B segment. It's a lot cheaper, a lot smaller, and it's designed to appeal to a first-time buyer. If you're a parent looking for a vehicle uh, for your teenager, or if you're looking to downsize, this is why you look at a subcompact car. Now, in terms of the Accent's name, it's actually been around for a while. What you're looking at is the fourth generation of this car. Uh, Hyundai introduced this fourth generation in 2012, and for 2014, they actually made a couple of updates here and there uh, to try to keep it competitive. Um, you can still get this car in the sedan or the hatchback body style. Obviously, I have the hatchback body style. And from there, you can choose two trims. There's the GLS and then the SE trim. I've got the higher SE trim. You can just distinguish it as an SE uh, from those upgraded 16-inch alloy wheels. The base GLS will have either 15-inch steelies or uh, alloy wheels, depending on if you get the premium package or not. Now, in terms of the design of this car, it's basically got the traditional Hyundai Fluidic Sculpture design theme. Uh, this car came out right after the Elantra for 2011 or the Sonata for 2011. So they basically mimicked it, uh, and it definitely needed a, a fresh dose of styling. The old accent was definitely looking old. Now, you can distinguish a 14 model from those LED accented head projector headlights in the front. Uh, the older models will not have those LED accents. You'll get that on the GLS premium package or my SE tester. Now, uh, this car can be head on with a lot of hot competition, especially Honda's redesigned 2015 Honda Fit, uh, the new Versa Note. Uh, then there's well-established players like the Ford Fiesta, the Mazda 2, the Chevrolet Sonic. And what the Accent offers is, you know, th some traditional Hyundai styling elements here, a stylish design theme, a good warranty, uh, usually lots of standard equipment here and there. Uh, but um, in terms of the design of this car, it doesn't really stand out as much as uh, it used to. It's definitely starting to age a little bit in the class. Uh, but let's go inside and take a look and see how the interior has held up over the years. Now, checking out the cabin quality and interior design of the 2014 Accent, uh, this is a subcompact car, so you really have to lower your expectations, especially me. I'm used to being around a lot nicer vehicles, so this is a very basic car uh, for a first-time car buyer. Now, stepping inside the cabin of the vehicle, it's uh, somewhat lower to the ground. I mean, it's the usual step in height of a small sedan. Now, here's the key for the vehicle. Oh boy, when I saw this key, it basically looks like the keys that Hyundai would give you from the 90s. And this car was redesigned for 2012, so I'm very disappointed with this key. It looks very cheap. Um, but again, uh, this car is a basic car. It doesn't offer push button start or keyless access. However, keyless entry is standard. You have to get the Kia Rio if you want that feature. So you got to stick the key in the ignition. Actually, it sounds like an old Toyota chime here when you put the key in, but the gauges look fairly nice. The traditional Hyundai colors here. And I'm not really a fan of that starter noise for the 1.6 liter engine, uh, but it's a direct injection engine and uh, it's a it's a pretty class competitive motor. Actually, I take that back. It's It's got mo the most power in the class if you're not gonna compare it to the turbocharged Chevy Sonic. Now, um, shutting the door, the window is actually automatic up down for the driver side only. The auto up function is new for 2014. Another new feature is the fact that the turn signals have a one touch three blink system. Uh, that's new for 2014 as well. Now, in terms of the rest of the interior, interior design. Hyundai hasn't really changed the uh, the design of it or, you know, added some upscale features here. What you're looking at is the most or is the most premium head unit you can get. Don't expect to find a touchscreen in this car or navigation. You have to go for the Kia Rio if you want those features. And because this is a subcompact car, this is a cheap car. I'm not going to put I'm not going to sugarcoat it. And the interior certainly is that way. It's got very hard touch plastics, but I, I can't really bark on it too much. Every car in this class pretty much does. Um, I'm not really a fan of the grading material. It's very cheap feeling, but at least everything fits together nicely. There's some splashes of faux aluminum trim here with some piano black accents to try to liven it up. Now, this is where I'm probably the most disappointed. It's hard touch plastic here, which is where I'm gonna rest my elbows. And then right here, it is hard touch plastic. Again, this is another area where I'm gonna rest my elbows. So I'm very disappointed this is not at least padded some way. The window switches, here's another thing that I'm gonna complain about, I have to. They, they feel very cheap. Uh, not They don't feel as high quality as even Hyundai's larger, not much larger or more expensive Elantra. So I'm kind of disappointed there. Now at least, what you do get with the SE trim is a leather wrapped steering wheel, which actually surprisingly, the steering feel of this car is quite good. We'll get on the road and show you guys that in a moment. But again, the gauges look good. 
A six-speed automatic transmission is your only choice for the SE. You can get this car with a six-speed manual on the base models, but it does have a manual mode here, um, traditional gate or gated style gate here. No paddle shifters on the wheel. The stereo system is very tinny sounding, so that's what you're going to expect in this car, of a, in this class of car. You crank up the stereo, it's going to sound horrible. Luckily, at least the armrest slides and adjusts, so that's nice. That's unexpected. Uh, it's got decent storage in there. The glove compartment is not damped, but it's a good size. And then the steering wheel actually tilts and telescopes. The telescoping function uh, is actually nice because uh, if you look at the Versa Note, for example, th that does only has a tilt steering wheel. I mean, overall, you really have to lower your expectations for this car in terms of features. Um, a sunroof is available. My tester doesn't have it, though. It's a $900 option. Uh, for the USB, the aux port, it's right there, but you have to get Hyundai's proprietary cable because this is their old system. It does have Bluetooth streaming and Bluetooth audio. At least it has that. And in terms of the steering wheel controls, you have you know controls for your volume, cruise, and then the Bluetooth controls here. Again, this is a pretty basic car, so the interior is pretty much class competitive, but I am noticing a lack of premium features that a lot of its competitors are starting to offer. Now, looking at the back seat of the Hyundai Accent hatchback, it's actually a pretty decent sized back seat you can see the floor in the middle is actually uh, flat so getting inside this car's back seat uh, the floor is a little bit on the higher side it's raised it feels kind of like the Honda fit uh, legroom is decent um, if you guys are over six feet tall you're probably not gonna like it the bench is on the low side for me I'm not really a fan I'm also not a fan of this scratchy feeling cloth seats they actually make my skin itch when I was sitting in them the seats themselves are pretty hard the front seats aren't very comfortable as well and then in terms of the materials back here there's actually one little cargo our cargo pocket there, map pocket there, and then everything else is hard touch plastic, but at least there is some fabric here on the doors as well. Uh, overall, the back seat, uh, it's traditional com subcompact uh, size here. Now, checking out the cargo capacity of the uh, Accent hatchback, it's actually pretty good with the class. You're looking at about uh, just over 20 cubic feet of space. If you guys go for the sedan, you're only going to get about 13 and a half. When you fold the seats down, um, they're going to get about 47 cubic feet of space. That's slightly less than the Versa Note and the Fit, but uh, much more than the uh, Ford Fiesta. Now looking underneath the hood of the uh, 2014 Hyundai Accent, it's got a pretty basic engine, although it does have direct injection, that's what GDI stands for. This is the company's 1.6 liter four cylinder with direct injection, double overhead cam, variable valve timing. The numbers actually are in the top of the class, uh, 138 horsepower, which matches the turbocharged Chevrolet Sonic. It's still more than the 1.5 in the fit, although this engine is a little bit bigger. Torque is 123 foot pounds. Uh, this car only comes with front wheel drive. You can take your pick between a six speed manual or the six-speed uh, automatic transmission that my tester has. Fuel economy is rated at 27 in the city and 37 on the highway. You'll get one MPG more on the highway if you guys go for the six-speed stick. Most people obviously are going to probably choose the automatic, so let's get on the road and see how it all works together. Now the subcompact class is a class of vehicle that I know very well having owned a, a previous generation fit for a year. So let's take a look and see how Hyundai's current generation accent compares to most of its competition, shall we? Now my initial impressions are that this is a basic car and it doesn't really, uh, it's basically designed to take you from point A to B. And the Accent is definitely, this current generation Accent is definitely better than the old one. I've driven versions of the third generation, hated that car with a passion. It was just a really, really cheap car. It was a basic car that felt cheap. And uh, I have to say that this current model still has some whiffs of cheapness here and there. I've definitely driven a subcompact car that's a lot more premium feeling than this car. six liter of uh, direct injection four cylinder certainly makes a lot of power for the class on paper. I mean, 138 still isn't really a lot of power, but this car weighs about 2,500 pounds. So it gets the car up moving. I mean, zero to 60 times are about nine seconds, which is actually a little bit faster than most vehicles in the class. I mean, if you're looking for the most speed, um, you're still gonna probably wanna choose the Honda Fit or the uh, Ford Fiesta. Uh, stuff like that, or the Chevrolet Sonic, that's gonna give you more more power, or at least a, a peppier feeling engine. Now, the transmission in this car is also pretty smooth. It's Hyundai's six-speed automatic, conventional automatic. Uh, it definitely gets the job done, and it doesn't really uh, have any have much in terms of shift shock. Now, when you're kind of just driving the car normally, as most people will probably drive their subcompact like this, the Accent actually, it does excel. Um, the structure feels 
decently stiff. I mean, I'm so used to cars that are much more expensive feeling, but this car, it does a good job of feeling like a bigger car. The ride quality is probably my biggest gripe. Uh, it's a very stiff ride, and it's also, it also transmits a lot of bumps. It's a bumpy ride, especially in, in this, these areas of DC where the roads are just crap. Uh, that can be attributed to the uh, semi-independent uh, torsion beam suspension in the back, but of course, all vehicles in this class have that type of suspension, so again, I have to lower my expectations here. But the car handles confidently. The steering is, surprise, is a surprising point with this accent. Uh, the steering has a, rel a really good amount of feel, actually. It has really good weight to it, and the accent feels decently playful. I mean, it's not as sporty feeling as the Honda Fit or the Ford Fiesta, but it's definitely much better than the Nissan Versa or the Toyota Yaris, for sure. Now, um, in terms of the visibility, this is a really small car. Uh, you have these pretty big side mirrors right here, and uh, Hyundai actually added that new side blind, that blind spot mirror uh, for the driver's side for 2014. It's actually a really good blind spot mirror. It shows you right what's in your blind spot, not that you really, you know, Need, to need that kind of mirror. This car is really, really small. Now, one of my other biggest complaints with this car is the seats. Uh, they are just awfully shaped, at least for me. Try the seats out yourself before you buy this car. Um, I just found myself, my back was killing me after just a few you know, miles behind the wheel of this thing, and it definitely uh, could use better seats. The uh, Honda Fit uh, definitely has much more comfortable seats. The Nissan Versa Note also has much more comfortable seats. Now sometimes I did notice the transmission in this car, it's so smooth and so slow shifting, it actually almost feels like a CVT at times. I'm not sure if Hyundai wanted it to feel like that, but I, I suspect most buyers in the class aren't really gonna care because uh, the transmission, it just gets the job done and the car feels very, very smooth most of the times. Now again, with only 138 horsepower on tap, this car is not gonna really blow your mind away, but uh, for most buyers in the class, you know, they're gonna think that it's adequate. It has enough power for most. Uh, however, Hyundai does have a 1.6 turbo version of this car. I would love to see it in this thing with like a sport version, especially since they do offer this the SE model with a six-speed manual, so that would actually be a really nice upgrade if they would offer this car with the turbo engine. you really feel this car's lack of power when you're going up hills and stuff like this. I mean, you really have to plant your foot down, which is probably why, um, you know, vehicles in the subcompact and compact class get similar fuel economy. So for those of you who think that you can get, a, if you buy a subcompact, you're gonna get the best gas mileage, you could honestly buy a compact car and get the same gas mileage just because you really have to push this engine to get it to accelerate going up these steep hills here. It definitely, you can definitely feel a very huge lack of power uh, when you have the vehicle taxed in situations like that. this review, let's talk about the fuel economy for a little bit. Uh, Hyundai has been getting a lot of heat from uh, a lot of consumers and the press for overstating their fuel economy on some cars. Now this car is rated at 27.37 and I have to say that I haven't been getting that just because it has no power. I'm constantly dipping into the throttle to get it to go keep up with traffic. So I've only been averaging about 24 miles per gallon in Pure City. On the highway I was able to push it up to about 33. So I was a little disappointed with the fuel economy. Those of you who have a little bit more of a conservative of foot, unlike me, uh, will probably end up getting a little bit better gas mileage. Now, in terms of the class, the Versa Note gets 40 miles per gallon on the highway, the Honda Fit gets 40 miles per gallon, same with the Ford Fiesta. So Hyundai has some work to do on the accent. It's definitely feeling old, it's definitely lacking features, and it feels a little bit on the cheaper side, to be honest, um, which is a little surprising because Hyundai's latest products to me have felt more expensive. They offer a lot of features for money and uh, very sensual styling that simply this accent just doesn't have uh, that presence that the bigger Hyundais have. Now, coming to the price of this car, this is another reason why you buy a vehicle like this. Uh, the Accent actually starts at just under $15,000 for the base model, the base sedan GLS model. That's actually a couple thousand dollars more expensive than the Versa Note. Uh, but of course, Hyundai gives you more features. Keyless entry is standard, air conditioning is standard, uh, power accessories, that's all standard. Um, the Versa Note, you have to go for the SV model to get that, and that's gonna put you basically in the same price range. Now, my SE hatchback is a little bit more expensive. Um, you basically, you know, add another thousand dollars for the automatic transmission. If you want a sunroof, that's another thousand dollars. Mine doesn't have it. It's tickets for about eighteen thousand two hundred. Now. 
that sounds like a reasonable amount of, reasonable amount of money, but if you look at like a, Hon a Honda Fit, for example, a 2015, which I haven't driven yet, I hope to uh, get a hold of one soon, I can show you guys that. Um, you can get a Fit EX for $18,000 and it'll have features like a backup camera, the Honda Lane Watch, the touchscreen, a radio display, push button start. It'll have all those features that the, uh, the Accent just doesn't have. Um, so, you know, for those of you who are looking for more premium features, you're gonna have to choose the Rio if you wanna stay in the Hyundai Kia family as the Accent simply just doesn't offer those features. It's designed to be a base car, but I really hope to see Hyundai refresh this car. I think it really should, uh, if it, going with their theme of being more elevated, more premium than other brands, they really need to elevate the Accent, which is their smallest, least expensive offering. So I look forward to seeing what Hyundai has in store for this car in the future. Until then, if you guys are looking for a subcompact car, uh, unless you have a soft spot for the Accent's looks, I really recommend checking out its competition first. Anyways, hope you guys have enjoyed my overview of this 2014 Hyundai Accent SE. Uh, thanks so much for watching, guys. I'll catch you all in the next review. What?